So hi from my side as well. My name is Sebastian. I'm working as a freelancer based in Munich. And today I will talk about putting hypermedia back in REST with JuxRS. So um, I actually see a lot of real world projects using some REST API or what, le what at least is considered to be REST. And I have a few examples uh, of this here and I will show you some hypermedia approach and what benefits has it using that. So this could be some example of a real-world REST API. Um, you have a uh, resource here, do some action or actually a verb, do something else, um, plus some input parameters and some output parameters. You probably have seen something like this in a real-world project or you're uh, using something like this. Um, yeah, what, what's the problem here, actually? If you look at it, it's actually something like SOAP without the SOAP envelope, and yeah, that's it. So um, yeah, this is not what REST is uh, considered to be. You're actually using here something like a RPC HTTP API call to do some work here, so do, do some action, or actually to get some information as well. So you're not using, in this case, the HTTP method was it what it's supposed to be. You're actually just calling some methods remotely via HTTP using some input and output parameters. And yeah, what REST is about is use, it's about using resources, which means every URL should in fact reflect some, represent some resource, and the resource should, should represent your business objects, your real business domain objects, so what you're talking about, um, which means if you have so, something like Amazon, you have some articles, some books maybe, you have some users, you have really some objects, and these objects should be um, represented by your URLs, something like this example. So you, want, you have a um, resource with a list of users. And for this case, you want to get all, um, all the users here. And so you're calling get, not post in this case, on the users resource. So that's a bit more what it's uh, supposed to be. And you're getting users back in an XML format. Actually, it doesn't matter in this case whether it's XML or JSON, it's just an example. And probably you get a list of users, and the user has a name and something else. And the thing is here, you have several of them, it could be five users, even more, and maybe you want to access that user separately. That user may have a single resource, a single URL in this case, and probably you're using something like this, and then you're assuming because I heard a lot, lot that REST is something about predictable URLs, that you say, okay, it's probably users slash one, two, three, four, five. And you have some kind of implicit logic using here, using that ID, one, two, three, four, five, and your client then constructs the URLs, users slash one, two, three, four, five. And this, of course, could be somewhat right that you say, okay, you're using resources here for each user, but still, um, the client has to do some, some implicit uh, logic. Um, but anyway, here you're using at least semantic HTTP. So the HTTP uh, methods, what, it's, uh, what they are meant to be, get instead of post in this case. And also for the uh, next example, um, you're using the status codes, what they are meant to be. So what's that example about? You want to create some new user here, which means you're posting to a new uh, to the resource users as you want to create a user, Duke in this case. And you say so you say, okay, I want to have a new user, so I'm posting to that location. And actually, instead of 200, okay, because everything's 200, okay, right? You're getting 201 created. Um, if you look at the RFC for HTTP. All the status codes have a specific semantics and, of course, the HTTP methods as well. So this is why you're using POST here and not GET. And this is why you also uh, get the 201 created status back. And also, uh, location HTTP header. So the server is here telling you, OK, you wanted me to create that, um, uh, that resource for you under that URL. And this is exactly the URL where you can find that resource. Um, so instead of just returning one to one to three for five in the response, and then 
assuming that the client knows, okay, the new URL will probably be user slash one two three four five. You're actively directing the user to the URL, what it's meant to be, and this is exactly the point where hypermedia kicks in, because you want to link the user to related resources and not let the user um, use some implicit logic to create the URLs. Some example: if you're um, using some website, so as a human. You may go to a Tintac website and you may search for, for some contact information. Um, what, you, what do you do? You go to the uh, homepage and then you have a look at the HTML saying, okay, I have something contact here. So I assume um, I will go to the address bar and typing Tintac slash contact information with the ID you found in the HTML. No, you don't do that. You, do, you click on the link because that's the way the websites were supposed to be and the HTML is supposed to be used. And hypermedia is somewhat about doing the same for APIs. Not in a sense that the client should be somewhat artificial intelligent, rather than you have a set of rules how to let the client follow your APIs and how to um, navigate through your API. For example, this example. It's um, somewhat similar to the uh, one you saw before. It's also a list of users. And you have the user Duke again. But instead of returning the ID here and let the client assume how to navigate, you have a link with a self-relation. And that is exactly the thing what the client needs to know. The relation self, which means, okay, I have the object around here, that specific user, and the self-relation of that link probably tells me how to access that specific user. And there you get the URL back. And then, in fact, it doesn't matter anymore if you have a somewhat predictable URL, in this case, for that user's resource, because you're actively directing the user how to get the resource, in this case. Um, another example, even a bit more complicated. This one is JSON, but it actually doesn't matter. It's not a user anymore here, it's a book. So imagine something like an Amazon API. You have a book with a name, with an ISBN, whatever, author, doesn't matter. And you also have several links. That self link, uh, for instance, again, pointing to, this, uh, to the same URL. And probably you want le to let the client to add that article, to add that book to his shopping cart. So for a normal website, that would be a fancy Add to Cart button. And for your app application using that API, you want to display that button as well. And this is exactly the point, that here you tell the client, OK, how to further use the API to um, let the um, article to be added to that shopping cart. Because um, this has a big, yeah, a big uh, impact as you are probably using some business logic here. You may say, okay, client, please add me a fancy add to cart button, but uh, only add that button if the article is in stock, or if the user has a certain credit on his account, or if the user is over 18 years old or something. You may have some specific business logic, right? And you may, um, yeah, manipulate the client's uh, behavior based on that logic. And the thing is, for hypermedia, you want to recite the business logic solely on the server side. And on the client, you should not do something like, OK, if availability is in stock plus price is, the price is something, rather than you let the client know, OK, that add to cart link with the relation here means that you should, in fact, display that add to cart link and the URL is um, how to use it, where you can uh, in fact, post that, art uh, that article to, which means the client is then yeah, dumber than before. It only has to know that relation and say, okay, if I find that relation, I will display the link. And the business logic is then no longer on the client side. Make sense? By the way, any questions so far? Feel free to ask any time you will get cool presents from Steven. Yeah. Yeah. Seriously, don't hesitate to ask. Okay, um, but this is actually an also quite simple example because you might ask, okay, now I have the URL, 
um, how to use the shopping cart. So I don't have to implicitly know the URL, rather than you just have it included in your resource. But how do I use it? I mean, I probably have to post something here, right? And to provide some information for that book to be added to the shopping cart. So you might have a post with an ID or an ISBN, plus a quantity, how many books you want to have. And this is exactly the point where hypermedia shines. Um, this is a different example using a siren, uh, siren content type, media type format. I will explain that in a minute, which has some actions plus the links. So imagine this is the same uh, resource we had before with the book name, author, ISBN, plus some links, plus some actions here. And you have an action add to card. This was somewhat the relation before. And you can here specify, hey, I want to post that in, um, in fact. I not want to get uh, this resource. Post to shopping cart with application JSON and please provide the fields ID for the book ID, for example, plus quantity. And now the client only has to know, okay, I know what these fields are. I know where the ID comes from. I know where the quantity comes from. And he no longer has to care either about the URL, jumping card, that may change. So this means the server is in charge of the URL again. Plus the logic how to use that resource, how to do this action, how to add the article to the shopping cart. And then you get more, more control to the server side again. So how would you use that? The client would see um, this action, say, okay, I know the name at to cart, I know what that is, I will display a fancy uh, button. And um, it must know, okay, ID, where does that come from? That may probably come from the same resource, the ID provided, and it uh, will just reuse it to let the um, server know which article may in fact be added. And a quantity, that could be some other client logic saying, okay, please display a drop down value, how many books you would like to add and so on and so forth. But this is then only client-related logic, how the client would map this data to that um, request, which will be sent to the server side. Make sense? Any questions? Okay. Um, there are actually many hypermedia uh, formats which, which allow you to, uh, to, be to be used in a similar way. Uh, actually, HTML is also a format you, um, yeah, which lets you use some hypermedia uh, in a sense that you can provide some links, you can specify a form, and this is probably uh, something similar to what you do here. So, uh, for example, take the website again. You have a website for the Tintag company. You may, ne may never seen that website before, but if you get a contact form, then it's a somewhat similar idea. You never saw the contact form uh, before, but you probably know as a human what to do. The form says, you, okay, please provide your first name, and then you as a human think, oh, first name, I know what that is, and you type it in. And this is somewhat uh, a same idea that the client then only has to know certain things and not had to, uh, has to know the whole application provided in some kind of documentation. Because then before what REST uh, is currently or mostly used in real-world projects, you have some kind of resources like the user slash 12345 and you, you have a really big documentation saying, okay, if you want to create a user, you have to post to users and you have to provide a first name and whatever, an ID, something else. And this has to be documented. And of course, it can be uh, made in another way and it can be made in a self-exploratory fashion using hypermedia. Make sense? So um, there are different formats here. These are all some kind of attempts to let these things getting uh, standardized. Uh, Hell is probably the first one, is probably one which is used the most. I didn't show an example from uh, this because it doesn't, in, in a default form, it doesn't let you uh, provide some actions. So it only lets you link to related resources. Um, the other ones uh, we might have a look at it. Uh, is Siren. This is what uh, I consider to be both very uh, powerful and be very productive for real-world projects. This is uh, the, the example I just showed you b before. And another interesting thing is JSON schema. 
because it lets not only lets you um, yeah, describe how your API is in fact being used, rather than it also gives you um, some kind of functionality how to yeah, describe your business model in fact. So you can also include a user. So what is that a user? What has it? Um, what properties does it have? Like the name, this must be a string with min length and ma max length and so on and so forth. And then you don't even need to document your business model because then that whole documentation and that whole info information is included in your API. You would only need to implement it. And that's the keyword, let's implement something. So questions so far? Everything crystal clear? Yeah? All right. So it could either be a good sign or a bad sign. So um, we will just um, create some default Java E7 project. This talk is about implementing uh, hypermedia with plain Java E7 and plain Java E technology. So we will just uh, create some test project. This is a script creating a Maven JE7 archetype. which is just an empty project and we will open that using an oops, IDE of your choice. Your test pom is created completely from scratch. Um, it's basically empty. The pom file only includes the JE7 uh, API, which is provided. You don't have to include it in your WAR file. You can see it right here. It's basically empty. And you have a JuxRS uh, configuration class here. It's just a, a default application uh, with the application path. So we want to uh, create a new resource here. Yep. Yep, in a minute. I will create a books resource. Please switch off your phones. <laughs> Sufficient? All right. Uh, can you please uh, close some of more of these jalousies for me? I think it's uh, all right. Only the light is. I think the sh size should be all right, right? Or do you need it bigger? I mean, I can't even do it any bigger. All right. Um, yeah. This is a JuxRS resource. Um, will be a stateless, so a, an EJB, and will have a path to say this is a JuxRS root, uh, root resource, will be books. All right. And it will, in fact, provide a set of books. This was uh, the first example uh, I showed you before, and this will be a list of books in this case, get books. And no, and the book will be a new class. In this case, it will be a, a POJO. Having some, let's say, some ID, a name, an author, and yeah, probably a price. Oh, by the way, don't do money calculations with floating point numbers in production. This is just an example, right? Good. All right. Nope. Some getters and setters. And just for convenience, a constructor and a default constructor. Questions? Should be clear. All right. So we have a list of books here. And as this is a JEE uh, 7 project, this list of books will probably come from another EJB. Uh, let's call it bookstore. Actually, it doesn't matter. And you say, OK, return bookstore, get books. In this case, um, we'll create that EJB, saying, OK, this is also a stateless EJB, creating some Come on, list of books. All right, saying, OK, create us, please, a list of a book with an ID 
and a nice name and an author and a price. No, not that expensive. And another book with another ID. And let's call it. Actually, it doesn't matter. Hello, whoops, world. This is because of your desired font size. You can't see anything. All right. Um, why is it complaining? It's a long string. String. Double. Sorry. Let's check that again. Oh, why is it? Uh, hmm. It was not my intention. I want to have it that way. S ID, then the name actually. Huh. No, IntelliJ uh, puzzles me. Normally should uh, take the order here. Anyway, that's what we meant to be. So um, that books book resource here takes the books from the EJB and returns it. Simple. Uh, actually, this is not want, what we are, want to have here. This is pro pretty boring because we want to uh, include some links. So this should, in fact, reflect that example here. Just we can use JSON. Actually, it doesn't matter. Um, create, uh, returning a book plus a link, right? So we will, um, in fact, include a link in our POJO. So some functionality how to uh, create links which means we will have a map with a string to a URI. The string will, in fact, be the relation, the relation self to some uh, link. Links. And we will rename that to underscore links, just like the example was. Um, actually, even if this will be JSON, the JSON implementations will take care of the JAXB annotation. So even if you say XML something, it also works for JSON. So this will be something like that example here using JSON, um, which means that we tell a resource, OK, please produce application JSON. Media type, there are some predefined media types here, like application JSON, and we will tag that one. OK, and we have some links, adding some getters and setters for the links. And then we will take the books here, which we got from the EJB, and we will create some links for the self um, links here. And the cool thing JuxRS provides us, it gives us a, us a functionality called URI info to create the URIs in a programmatic fashion. Um, we will inject an object uh, using add context. This can be used to inject several JuxRS context objects. And the object will be URI info. And this URI info, and this is the uh, cool story for each, we will, um, just because we can use some cool Java, e, uh, Java 8 lambdas, um, saying, OK, book, please uh, get me the links and put something here. Uh, put a self-relation -rel using some self-URI. Uh, and that self-URI uh, will be created using the Java E technology from JuxRS. Sure. Um, so we have a second JuxRS method here, which um, in fact, only gives you one book, specific specific book um, returned from one ID. And this is the point. Don't tell your client here how that log logic looks like, because this is the yeah implicit logic how the URIs are um, will be created, and then the the client shouldn't know this anymore. Um, so you have a long ID provided as a path parameter. This gets substitute later. And this is used to return the book from, just for now, use another method in your EJB, which returns only, nope, only one book. Yes, I want to have you right. Nope, not together. Create a method, get book. And return a new book. No, I forgot something. Using that ID and a name and an author and a price, right? 
and this will be um, returned by the ID. Anyway, what I wanted to show, you now have um, the path from the books resource and that book, uh, get book method, and this will in fact give you this path, but uh, hold on, you don't want to have curly bracket ID curly bracket, you want to have the real ID, right? So there's a functionality to later substitute that path parameter, because JuxRS also knows this, using the build method. And this build method can take some um, arguments, for example, the book get ID. And then the ID will be taken programmatically in your, for your URI to substitute this part to construct your URI. And then you can take that URI and add it to the links here. Questions? Make sense? All right. Um, so we got this working for the list of books. And now we want to have the same thing for this resource um, using also that add to card link, right? So we take that book again and say book. Actually, we can just copy paste, paste program in this case, saying, OK, you have the self URI. This one is a book. Get the ID to construct the URI. And you have an add to card URI saying um, get the builder from that. Oh, hold on. We don't even have that resource. We will call it card resource. Um, just because of the time, I won't fully implement this resource. I will just create an empty uh, JuxRS resource so that the path can be accessed from this uh, shopping cart. Right? So this can totally be empty, only that the URI info can access it and use that string. And this will be um, then taken to construct the URI. Actually, we can. Um, for the shopping cart and the add to cart link as well. And we say, okay, book, get links, and put the self and put the add to cart relation to the add to cart link. Questions? Okay. If, if we uh, didn't make any errors here, this will work. So let's try it out. Um, we are in our project. This is a defa uh, default Maven project, so we will use the defa default Maven clean install functionality to build it. This will just uh, create that almost empty WAR file, and of course it's Java 7, so even faster than I can talk, this will be created, and it will be um, deployed in a Wi-Fi. This is Wi-Fi 9 or something, and yep, no errors. Sounds good. Yep. Test, test, one, two, three. Okay, works again. So hopefully we are live again, even with audio. Okay, so uh, what did we do? We deployed the whole thing on a Wi-Fi on just a local host. So then you may fire up a REST client of your choice. Um, I'll be using Postman in this case. And let's wait. So we have, of course, I prepared something. That resource, hypermedia test, uh, deployed on localhost resources. That was the JuxRS uh, application and books resource. Just send it, and of course, an error. Um, null pointer exception. Okay, this is good. I just said everything's live, so that may um, occur here. Very good, thanks. So far, I didn't forget it, but today I did. Well. That's left. So he gets at least two presents. He <laughs> <laughs> was yep. So we will rebuild the whole thing. 
and it's pretty fast, of course. Redeploy it. Questions so far? And then, hopefully, it, will, it works. So uh, what did we do? We have the two books here res uh, included in the books resource, and we have the self-link created in a somewhat programmatic fashion using the JuxRS um, functionality. So we can just follow that, and please give us this back. And oh, we're on the books resource, so that add to cart link is also included. And yeah, by the way, be, um, an Another cool functionality of that URI info is that it uses information from the current request. Which means if the client sends its request to not the server directly rather than to a proxy server, to an Apache or Nginx, and this is pretty much the case in real world projects, this will also work. If you just use, this is a local domain which uh, points through the host file to the local host, and this will then be used because it's in the server um, HTTP field from the client's request and will in fact be used to create that URI because we said here in the uh, books resource the get base URI builder and then for the current request um, it will construct a base URI using the server and the port information from the client uh, HTTP request. So this is also a cool functionality which gives you that proxy um, thing for free if you have a proxy server. All right, questions so far? Yes, yeah. Question. Oh, yeah. Hold on, Mike, for the live audience. Everyone test, who wants test. to hear. Don't say anything. Test, test. Yep. One, two. Testing. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yep. um, is it any convention um, to um, place the links with underscore links in the JSON object? No, this was or just, just um, um, an example. Well, it was more or less uh, a convention, not in a specific uh, content type. This uh, was the example where I showed, uh, showed before. This is a simpler content type using just the links, not some kind of actions here. But you can either um, use the logic from some more or less standardized content type, like hell or something, or you invent your own kind of company-wide oh, okay. content type. And then you may say, or it's underscore links, or at links, or something else, just to, I, I only do this a lot to identify that it's not part of the resource itself, that it's not a property of that book, rather than something else. Okay. Make sense? Yeah. Yeah. Thanks for the question. You get a present. <laughs> All right. Yep. Is there the, some cool API to get it passed on the client side? Um, yeah, there are. Actually, I will show that Siren example in a minute. There is a Siren um, implementation for this. And yes, they are, depending on the content type you're using. So for the more or less standardized, uh, there also may be a client um, implementations. The thing is, you sooner or later have to inc include this kind of implicit logic how the resources are mapped uh, to the client's information. What I showed before with the ID and the quantity, remember from the book adds to cart, right? Because that has to be known for the client um, where that information comes from. And this is totally business related to your application, right? But uh, it totally makes sense to either include some third party dependency how to um, follow these siren links or for your domain, um, for your business uh, specific content type, if you have some, to um, yeah, include it everywhere in your client that you don't have to constantly repeat yourself because this logic can be re reused over and over again, right? Thanks. Anything else? Okay, um, this was a was an example using a POJO, which was uh, a bit um, manipulated using JAXB mappings. But if you have uh, either like like Siren, a more complicated content type, or your own, or you need more um, more control over your resource, then you may do something else. So let's do another example using not a POJO rather than something called a JSONP API. This is included in Java E7. It's an API to programmatically construct JSON objects. So you can, in fact, return something like a JSON array. And this is standardized for the uh, JE7 application servers that your server must support that. And you can then, oops, 
and programmatically construct JSON objects. Which means we have now a list of books here returned from the bookstore and we can now, we will get uh, rid of this for now, say okay books please map the whole thing using a stream and then you have the book here and you will return a JSON object using some builder pattern like JSON uh, object builder saying okay please add um, a name for example coming from a uh, book get name please add an author coming from book get author and the price and so on and so on this is uh, pretty boring and also add some links let's do the underscore again just because we can and this is also then a nested JSON object just call it JSON links and this will then come we could also nest this uh, in fact but then nobody will be able to read it um, so we do a local oops, uh, JSON object and then fire up another no JSON object builder saying okay we have the links this will be a self link coming from that logic again saying okay we have the self URI this is the same just like before and it is yeah b dot id um, self URI and JSON B uh, JSON P doesn't uh, support URIs you will in fact have to uh, call to string this will also then uh, create a string of your URI and saying okay build build a JSON object out of that and add this JSON object to the links section and then build a JSON this one as well return it in your mapping uh, method in your mapping um, lambda and then you have a stream of JSON objects right because you just created them and you will um, want to have a JSON array with all the JSON objects in there so you will call that a stream API collect uh, using just because it's cool we will using that method handle JSON create a uh, array builder and JSON array builder colon colon add JSON array builder add and of course return this refactor oops and then we have a JSON array builder and then we can invoke build and this will be a JSON object and we can also to this and it will be a little simpler and that's it questions so what did we do we um, used the EJB to return the books we created a stream we created a mapping functionality to take the books and create a JSON object out of it including a self link using the JUXRS URI info and then we created a JSON uh, array out of it including all these objects and we returned it so the JuxRS method returns a JSON array. Same thing uh, will be done here. JSON object, get book. From out of this, uh, we will take the book. And uh, we will here create an object using the same builder pattern, saying, OK, please add a name. Book, get name. Uh, add an author. Oops. Author and add these uh, links as well. Using this time JSON links built, um, using these uh, this time both links. So we can also copy paste the program here as well. And for your real world applications, you certainly want to outsource that logic into either a, s uh, a separate CDI managed bean or some private method, or depending how big your API is, right? You don't want to um, repeat yourself over and over again. And now that JSON links object is here, having this self uh, relation. And now let's format that for re readability and also having an at to card relation link 
and this will be this add to cart URI. Dot questions? Yep. Um, not yet. So you can, in fact, using uh, use JAXB to map POJOs. This is what I used before, but uh, just because you don't have the flexibility. And this is why I show that programmatic example as well. If you say um, you have the same structure over and over again, and it makes sense to introduce some POJOs, which reflect your JSON, your desired JSON structure, then it makes sense and it, then it totally works. You can use JAXB annotation for these uh, kind of fields you want to tweak by the name or something. Um, this works, you can go with that way. Or if you say, okay, you need really more control and also more programmatic control, depending on your business logic, that may change, your structure may change on either this or that case, then it makes sense to programmatically do this. Present. Okay, very good. Now we have uh, added these links here. And we will, um, if I could spell return, this created a JSON object including all that information. So what do we do here? We get the book, we created uh, the two URIs just uh, like before using the Java E functionality. We created that uh, nested JSON object and then we will return everything. And hopefully it gives us just the same or a similar response like before. Questions so far? No? All right, then we will run it. We'll now redeploy everything and hopefully we can see something. All right, no errors. Turning the books resource first. You can see, okay, just like before, the name <coughs> author, the links to that book, and also name author and the both links just like before. So this is nothing that spectacular, but now you can um, do whatever you like. You can either do um, that what I showed before or an even more sophisticated example using some content type structure, whatever you want to have. So you could in fact use um, that siren example and create a somewhat similar response to this using actions and a crazy complex JSON structure using that JSONP functionality. And this is everything, all, and that's a cool, th uh, cool story, included in the JEE7 functionality, which means we still have in our POM file only that dependency here, which is provided. So your WAR file is basically empty. empty. And I showed several uh, examples of the content type. Of course, there are uh, um, already implementations for this. So you will have a Siren4j functionality. And I have a GitHub project using, oops, where is it? JaxRS uh, called Hypermedia. This has a somewhat similar example to what I showed using a more fully fledged example using these books, how you can um, access and use the API. So this is a somewhat similar what you just saw before. And it also uses, um, just for the example, a siren for j thing. Um, oops. And this is the dependency. And what does it uh, provide you here? It gives you an also uh, programmatic way to create what for Siren is called an entity and to programmatically create that JSON using, of course, predefined methods, which means you have some kind of actions. And actually, I can show you the uh, example here. Um, business orders. Entity Builder, and then you have something similar to uh, JSONP, but also with predefined methods. And of course, this is a bit uh, somewhat benefit um, as you already have this method here. But I would argue it also gives you um, another third-party dependency, and you probably may not want that. And this is why I showed you the JSONP example, how to programmati uh, programmatically um, implement something similar actually with more with more control and more power and to get rid of that third-party dependency in this case. 
so you can just stick with uh, Java E7. Yep, questions so far? This example is on GitHub, using Stashner uh, Jaxores Hypermedia approach. You can uh, check it out if you like. And yeah, this, this gives you another somewhat more than Hello World example how a Hypermedia API looks like. <coughs> yep, questions? Um, Yep. Yep. And uh, I, I like, for example, the, um, the web client that, that comes with HAL that you can use to, to navigate through the hypermedia mm -hmm. and and see the entities. Um, but to be true, this um, action thing looks yep. very good. And yep. um, is, is there a good um, documentation or, or site when I, where I can see the the benefits of mm -hmm. each of the hypermedia implementation and if there are, for example, Java EE or, or Spring APIs and so on? Not that I've found so far. Okay. So all uh, of them of are, of course, trying to do to standardize their own content type. Sure. Um, but yeah, all of them have their somewhat benefits and disadvantages. So I would argue that way that you say, okay, it de totally depends on your application or on your API, API what you're trying to do. If you say you do it in a more generic way, like the siren example with even the actions, provided that the client only needs to know a minimal set of information, minimal set of knowledge, how to use your API, then of course this is better in saying your client doesn't have to have this implicit logic. Of course it also is a bigger effort in implementing all that logic on the client side. Because then you more or less have to implement a client Navigating like a, sh like a human would navigate to self-exploratory access your API. Sure. So I would argue the bigger your API is and the more it is used from a different set of clients, then the more it makes sense to um, apply some kind of hypermedia API. So what we did so far in a, a real world project, we didn't do a, a somewhat fully fledged hypermedia approach with all these actions, rather than we did the link approach I showed before. That you say, okay, you can use links to um, let the client not know anything about how the URIs are constructed and to have some certain informations where the client doesn't have to know some business logic, like the add to cart button, when should I add that add to cart button, right? But uh, not for the fully fledged action included example so far. So, uh, so it totally, um, it totally uh, depends on what you're trying to do. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think one big benefit is that you know the type. Like, is it a get, a post, a delete, or oh, okay, yeah. that with the links uh, or with the actions you, you yeah, have exactly. the type. Yeah, exactly. So the actions tell you how to use get. it. Yeah. Sure. And the other thing, you would still have to document. Okay, I know the um, action from the relation, which means I know the relation, and you will still have to document how to use that relation at to cart. And with, uh, with that siren example, you wouldn't even have to document this. But it totally depends what you're trying to do. Oh, okay. And the other thing is where it depends, um, what I showed just in the beginning with that do some action API, so that RPC style API, which I often see in projects. Um, my point is, it's totally fine to do it that way. Just to say, okay, it makes sense for us. We have only one server, one client. We just call them in an RPC style fashion over HTTP. But please don't call it REST then, because it, yeah, it confuses all the developers that you say you imply that this is something, a somewhat RESTful API. It makes sense to do it that way. It m may make sense depending on what you're trying to do, but please don't mix up these words, right? Thanks. Um, any other questions? Anything else? You got cool presents. Don't be shy. All right, then thanks a lot for your attention. <coughs> All right, do you guys want to <coughs> jump right into my presentation or do you want to do something else? You, you, you decide. I want a quick break. To stop the recording? 
Okay. Let me...